Hey guys, it's Alani. I'm here with Johnny Shreve. He is blowing up on YouTube and killing it in the fitness space. And as you guys know, if you've been following, my channel is I am on prep for the Chiseled Classic in 18 weeks now. So it's a two day event. The second day is gonna be kind of a Q and A with a panel. So Johnny's gonna be a part of that. So I feel like not a lot of people in the fitness space are tapping into really how you grow as a creator. And somebody that's trying to grow myself and on that path, I'm gonna ask him a lot of questions about how he monetizes in this space, how he got started, how he finds these collabs, these brand deals, that kind of thing. So let's get started. Let's go. All right, cool. All right, so we're gonna do it here. I might have to switch his hands up anyway, but I like doing this is kind of give us a nice little stretch right away because you okay. like doing one arm. So for me, this is like a like a full activation thing. We could yeah. do like pull-ups if we want to, but just to get a little more out of it with okay. some leverage. So I want to just take this like five to like 15 reps. Perfect. So we're gonna go like here. Nice stretch. All the way through. Okay. Up slow. Stretch right out. And like a two to three negative, stretch to the top, pull. Uh, all right. I'm gonna get you go a bit. I'm gonna coach up on things. Okay. Good shit. Good. Now I want you to take your time at the top, right? We're gonna get the most amount of muscle recruitment. So keep your head back a bit. So let look up. There you go. Okay, well, keep going. Now keep your head here. Let your arms straighten out. Now keep your shoulders down still. Yeah, there you go. Now look up. There you go. Now I'll pull down from there. There. Up. Nice and slow. Once you get to the top, you're going to feel your body like stretching from here. And feeling this here. You feel it stretching here? Yeah. Perfect. Pull down. Good. Now I want a little more leverage. So I want you to push your toes into the ground and make sure you're nice and tight on this thing here. So you're gonna feel like your body being stretched from the top and stretched from the bottom. Okay. Um, I guess the first good question would be, what got you into it? Like, what, what how did you transition from competing, right, in the Olympia and then kind of creating content? How do you get into that? So the content came before the Olympia. Okay. So I started, these are deep questions. Yeah. I started competing right after I finished um, college and then I was finished drug addiction counseling. Okay. So when I got into bodybuilding, I used my platform as like, that was gonna be like my space where I can show people you can blow your life away, screw it, and then like make a comeback. Yeah. And that was gonna be like my comeback store and I was gonna kind of like, you know, showcase that. Yeah. And I thought I would get a lot of views and people would watch it and no one watched anything. So it was like a very, you know, for the, the first, learning process, for the right? first bit it was like, you know, no one really watched any, any of it. I didn't probably get any views probably until like three years ago. I had, my highest view count was probably like 500 until like the pandemic happened. Wow. But my entire journey started from me just wanting to show people that you can, you know, make a comeback story. And that was my thing. That's yeah. awesome, yeah. Cool. Good. Give me like a second little pause, stretch, jack down. There you go. Up. Good. That's it. Nice stretch. Pull. Good. Nice stretch. Feel here. I want you to tap into this. Pull. Good. Good. And look up where you're going to. Look for it. There you go. Perfect. Drive through. There you go. It kind of didn't take off until three years ago. What do you think you changed? What made it take off? So I think, um, I think a lot of the uh, mistakes creators make is they make content for themselves. Yeah. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. I still make content that Genuine, I love to do, yeah. right? But I was making content like, it was like road to the Arnold, road to, you know, nationals. And when I was putting that content, I was like, look at me train, look at me prep my food. Yeah. When the, what I should have been doing was, why am I eating this food? Why am I doing these exercises? So you're saying making it more educational. Exactly. Gotcha. So I created more value with them. Yeah. So what I changed was basically, so when the pandemic happened, I put out a plan called the uh, Homegrown Games. Everybody couldn't go to the gym. They're, you know, they were basically at home, could do anything. And I'm like, send me whatever you have at home. Like whatever, send me pictures or whatever. And I'll create a plan for you that's based on what you can actually achieve. So if you're like, I want to build muscle and you only have a, you know, a soup can, I'm like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But here's what you can do, right? Yeah. And then doing that, 
I got questions like, okay, so how do I do this? And it was yeah. like basic shit. And I'm like, yeah. so as I started, I started putting out more content during the pandemic of how to huh. hold a dumbbell properly, how to do resistance bands or whatever it was. Yeah. And then I started seeing things come in more and more and more. So yeah. it just, makes a lot of sense too, because yeah. I feel like that's something I noticed is things that seem so simple to us when we've been doing it for a while. Obviously, you've been doing it yeah. longer than yeah. I have. But the simplest things, like people just need to hear, yeah. like the logistics, yeah. right? That's no one cool. knows, what, like no one's going to school. We all have been to school, college, whatever. Yeah. No one's teaching anything fitness related unless you go into gym. Yeah. And you're still not teaching anything about like how to properly train, what proper hypertrophy is, the proper you know fundamentals. So, and it's nothing to blame them at all. It's no. it, it's just how it is. They have their own life. They have their own job yeah. to focus so, on. This is our life. Yeah. Exactly. So like giving them enough value in terms of like just teaching them basic shit. Like I was teaching them like how to like hold a dumbbell in the middle so you can yeah. balance the yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, I, d I didn't know. And exactly. like, I'm like, really? That's, so like little things like that yeah. um, is how my channel went from being like kind of dormant to, I had 800, I had 800 um, subscribers at the beginning of the pandemic and my goal was to get a thousand. And now you're at like over 600,000, yeah. right? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Make this do this. So why don't you let your elbows Externally rotate a little bit. Otherwise, oh, there, okay. yeah, there you go. Then we really drive it down. You'll feel a little more tired. There you go. So Good. almost underhand. Yeah, okay. almost. You're just trying to force in a little bit of that supination, a tiny okay. bit, but more so from the external rotation from here, right? So we can get our our tears to work a little bit more gotcha. from here. There you go. Right. You probably feel a little tighter mm -hmm. down here. Perfect. Definitely. Good. Give me a nice second. Let it let it pull you up. Let it stretch you. Then go. Good. Your job is just to guide it back up, keep yourself active, engage, drive through. Good. And use that core, floor to core. Use your feet, use your core to help drive you forward. There you go, good. Perfect. So, we want this to be long enough, so I want you to be in full protraction at the end. It's like reaching. Exactly, so we're looking at like, you know, you can judge it's like, you know, work on your back, back thickness, yeah. right? So back thickness is like your protraction to retraction. So your, sure. your scaps, Retracting your rhomboids, your uh, your um, traps, rear delts. So this motion here, along with then your lats, actually working as well. So we want to be full protraction and then full retraction. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right. Give it a go. Okay. Now I want you to really like get like like really methodical with it. Don't jerk the weight. Right. Okay. Let your let your body retract. There you go. Right. Feel the pull come from your scaps first, and then pull all the way through. Good. Yeah. Pull it out, nice stretch, pull, good. Pull. Gotcha. Stretch, pull. Stretch. Yeah, getting that full stretch. Pull. Okay. Right? Yeah. Stretch. Cool. Now I want you to think too when you're pulling, I want you to pretend you're pulling yourself into the bench, okay. not pulling yourself back. Gotcha. Right? So a nice posture from here and you're pulling yourself into the bench. I have the same, the same kind of analogy when I'm pressing. I, pre I feel like I'm pressing myself back, not pushing the weight off my chest. Gotcha. Is that me? Oh, man. <laughs> so, the goal for, so the goal for me is like, how can I make this, make the lightest weight Feel as heavy. hard as I can, okay, and then progressive overload it from there. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. I said it the other way around, where it's like now I gotta kind of back off weight. Yeah. So for here, it's like yeah, I can probably put on another plate. Yeah. But I'd rather make this hard first. Exactly. And then like as we go progressive overload, then I can add a rep every week until I've reached my maximum of reps. Yeah. That's all I like, kind of doing like a five to fifteen rep range. Gotcha. Right. My rep speed is gonna be like a two to three second negative. Yeah. One second pause in this in the stretch, and then one second negative, or like sorry, concentric or positive. Uh huh. It's like a, it's really like a five second rep. Yeah. So five second rep, five reps is twenty five seconds. You're looking at like almost like a bottom end range of a of hypertrophy. Yeah. Being between thirty to forty five or fifty second. Okay. Rep or yeah. set, right? Yeah. So you're just trying to like get the most out of each each rep. Not necessarily the most of each set. If you look at the entire set, look at each rep. Okay. Right? Yeah. Do you feel like that's helped with your longevity too and being able to stay active and less injury? In the last, that in the last like four or five years. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. 100%. Because I have to. I had to. Absolutely. Um, I've had some injuries 
from ballistically lifting weights, doing it, swinging right around, not engaging my core, loading my spine. And then it forced me to have to like really like dial it back. Yeah. But if you look at recovery, recovery starts the second you stop working out, you start, you stop training. Mm -hmm. If you're in the gym, just kicking the shit out of yourself for two hours and you're just, how much longer does it take for your body to recover? And a good point you make because yeah, you're young now, but guess what you're gonna be doing hopefully in 10 years? The same shit. Exactly. And regardless of your training or not, whether, whether it's not that I see training, but you'll be in the same if you space. Don't, if you don't yeah. compete ever again, I'm, I'm sure you plan on working out for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right, so. Or walking. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> don't put having I train, have such nice glutes and I look great on stage. And then a couple years later, you're kind of fucking limping. Yeah. And I can't fucking move around. Yeah. I, I used to look really good back in the day. Did none of this hurt back in the day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's important. Have you noticed that you started monetizing and kind of getting most of your mm. income from something like this in the so, fitness space? I'll give you some really good advice. Yeah. Don't count on YouTube for money. Okay. At all. Okay. It's good that like, yeah, once your channel gets bigger, you'll get, you know, AdSense, you know, we get paid by Google ads. Yeah. Right. Basically like, depending on your video, depending on the ads should, that happen, yeah. you know, your video will get X amount of dollars. It's not a solid thing to go on because I've made between 10, between when I first started, my first check I got was like, I was a check, it was like automatic deposit. It was 200 bucks. And I was like, holy shit. I'm rich. 200 bucks. And then it was like, then it was like three. And then it was like 5,000. And then all of a sudden it was like 10,000. And it was like 15,000. It was like 20,000. So like, you know, it's monthly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it can go right back down to 5,000. So you have to be very like, you can't like. It's not reliable. It's not reliable. It's really good to have. And like, so I, I'll always look at YouTube as like, I'll like, I'll like, I'm guaranteed to get five to 10,000 guaranteed. A month? Just, yeah, just okay. just for me putting out this vanilla shit. Exactly. Right? That can sometimes be in, and be on the high end. So mm -hmm. I don't overshoot or, or expect this month I'm gonna make X, because I can have the same videos, have the same kind of content, and then it's just the algorithm, depending on what the video is. Like, and you could put a video out that will be really, really good, and all of a sudden you said something in it that might have a flag, and then they kind of stop monetization on it. Yeah. Right? So it's good to like, it's good to have an idea of like, you know, what's coming in, but my YouTube is my marketing for my business. Gotcha. So I look at YouTube as YouTube pays me to market my own business, to help sell my training programs, my online coaching. So that's where I look at yeah. YouTube for me. And that's kind of unique too, because instead of it being an expense to advertise, yeah. you're kind of getting that paid. Yeah. And then again, like I also have to like think of how much I pay, like the money I get from YouTube goes yeah. right back into Absolutely. editors, videographers, like, th like being down here is paid from me making money from YouTube. Yeah. Right. So like this gives me the ability to go and collab with you, come to places like th like this to get more exposure. So I'm getting that money from YouTube to do that thing, but I don't look at YouTube as like, right? this is the money I'm making. Yeah. Right. So you have to like be very careful about that. But again, like you can, it's always a good to a good feeling like, Hey, I'm getting paid by this. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 So that kind of goes with what I hear a lot. Again, like starting off in this and the importance of building your brand. Like, how does that feel to you? Like you have to build your brand so that this all ties together so that your YouTube ties in with your training and your yeah. online coaching. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It, brand is, so if uh, the good thing is a brand for me, um, oh my, my guy Lou's here. Um, <laughs> this is my, man, my manager. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for so so for us, when it comes to like content, when I put out, I have like four pillars. Okay. Mental health, training, nutrition, and cardio. Love that. So all of my content is going to be based on those four pillars. So I'll put out content based on mental health. I'll put out content on training, nutrition, cardio. So everything that I do is going to be around those four pillars. So that is why in the, my four pillars, like that's my root. Those are my values or things I believe in wholeheartedly. Yeah. Right. And then it's so, true to you. It's exactly. authentic. And yeah. then it, exactly. So it, cause it, I will never put out something that I'm like, Oh yeah. And I've, and I've caught myself a few times, like 
you know, trying to find content to do. And I'm like, yeah. how is this, how do I make this fit into my, how do I do a reaction exactly. video on Alex Eubank that's gonna fit my four pillars? Yeah. And I'm like, some does and some you're like, it's a reach. Yeah. So you have to be very like careful to scale it back and like stay like true to what you value and your content, but at the same time, making sure that that content has high value. Yeah. Like 95% of the stuff I put out is high value and free. Yeah. The 5%, you gotta pay for you. Yeah. You should feel this getting exhausted from your scaps and then your lats next. Stretch, good. Out, pull, good. Stretch, yeah, good. I'm going to kind of do almost like a, like a, all the way from the floor. But I'm gonna kind of keep my hips like sitting into my, like thinking I can my thigh. So I'm pulling from here. Nice. From here. Gotcha. And stretch. Brian, right, get that like, like long like, stretch there you go, good. Now we don't have to go all the way down, like don't have to let your butt your back go down, keep keep it up like this, and let everything wrap behind, over. There you go. And now pull. Okay, so yeah. kind of similar to the last one, like reaching exactly. over. Okay. Yeah, good. Go try and pull the thing right to your stomach. There you go. Stretch. Good. And that path is gonna come all the way up. Go. Good. Pull it right into your gut. There you go, good. So when you started getting more consistent into posting and getting into that space, did you feel like you were following a posting schedule? Or when you started doing that, do you think that that helped you? Yeah, it, it's honestly like, there's like all the analytics in the world you can, I always look at, I'm an analytic. Yeah. I don't know like, you know, what, when should you post? And, and as much as like there are a bunch of suggestions, whether it's from like YouTube algorithm mm -hmm. or Instagram or TikTok, it's more so just being consistent. So if you're going to post four days a week, be consistent on those four days at that time you're gonna post. There's a lot of those suggestions like for my, ch for my channel, it's like basically like 12 o'clock every day. Yeah. Noon every day, post. Okay. And that's YouTube you're talking about? You, you, well, YouTube and like Instagram's like sometimes like, you know, it's more frequent. So like, yeah. you wanna do like, like three to four times a day. Yeah. You know, more like mo uh, morning, midday, mid afternoon, and then like dinner time, whatever. Gotcha. The biggest thing is just being consistent, okay. right? Like if you're gonna post, like I think the biggest problem with people who want to grow a channel and ask them like, how many times to post, like, I, you know, once, once or twice a month. And I'm like, well, you're not getting it. Like, good luck. Yeah. Find your other bar right to your stomach. Tight core, pull right through. That's it. Pull. Control. Pull. That's it. Nice. That's it. Control. That's it. Pull. Good work. Come on. Pull. Good shit. Nice. Three. Good work. Two. Good work, one more. Good. Whew. Good. So going back to like a monetization standpoint, what do you think, what platform it, or stream of income, I guess even coaching, has brought you the most return, you would say? What platform? What platform or avenue that you're doing, like what stream of income do you think has you've had the most success with? Coaching. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the focus. Okay. Is that like, um, I think it's, I think you have to make the people have to make up their mind whether or not they're content creators or they're coaches and then they create content. So what would you consider yourself? I'm a coach. Okay. Yeah. I'm a coach and I and I create content for my coaches. Well you're gotcha. Yeah. It's the yeah. goal behind your content, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think and that's like I've I've created you know, um, uh, two ebooks. I'm creating another one. I'm, re for, I'm redoing my old uh, PPL ebook. Okay. And I want to put out more, you know, of that for um, a targeted demographic. I'm really going towards like the 40 plus demographic. Yeah. Um, and then, and that's the biggest thing is like understanding like what your, 
you know, what you're trying to put out, what product you're trying to put like out. Like what your audience is? Exactly. Okay. No, like, and that's going to change too. Like again, like when I first started out, my YouTube channel was 10 years, it was 2012, right? So now those people who are, you know, almost like 11 years ago, 12 years ago now, I think, almost yeah. whatever, they're now 12 years older. Yeah. So they're, they're, you know, what they want to see or what they want to learn about is going to change. Yeah. So things are always going to change. So you have to know like who you're, what your what your business is yeah who you're targeting yeah and then making sure you're staying on you know staying above or in front of the trend or what you're doing to yeah. continue to put out value to your target audience now i'm still going to always put out content for those that are you know my my analytics are i would say between i think it's like 18 to 30 is the one like it's actually almost, it's almost split 30, like my, the, one of the demographics is, is like 24 to 35. Okay. Um, and then 35 plus or 40 plus. Okay. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at more of like, I split up and I look at more like 35 to 40 is more of like their own thing. So between 35 to 65 and 18 to 35 is almost like 50, 50. Gotcha. But when it looks like, when it comes to like, there are some, one demographic is going to want to see more stuff. Other demographics are going to want to buy more stuff. Yeah. Right? And kind of targeting what you're... Yeah. And I mean, my buy is just like, it's like, you know, like, the older you get, the more you're not buying things because you think it's cool, it's trending. You're buying things because this is going to help me with, you know, John is something out about mobility. Because it has value, like and, you Yeah. Said. Like, I'm, I got kids, I need to know how to train, you know, yeah. I, my time is, is, you know, is a lot less. You know, I'm gonna pay for Johnny to help me manage my time and how to train and so forth. Yeah. And for me, again, like that's that's my life as well too. Like my training has evolved. Like, I don't have all the time in the world. Like this is the most time I've ever had in the last like bit to train with somebody. Yeah. Right. When I'm back home, it's like I don't. Boom, boom, boom. I have yeah. 45 minutes to an hour to train. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are that are my age or like you know either entrepreneurs, or business owners, or they're just, you're, you know, they're working, they have families, they have, they have their own life going on, yeah. Or there's their students, right? There's, there's, there's that thing that, you know, I find I have less time to, than I did before. So I know that there's a massive amount of people out there who are the same, who still don't have that uh, knowledge behind how do I delegate my time so I can continue to train because training is crucial. Yeah. Right? Like, you're going to be doing this until you're dead. Yeah. Right? And training is going to keep you from being in the grave. Yeah. Be serious. Yeah. And the older you get, the more you realize that's what you want to train for. Or so when you're younger, like, I want to look really good. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with that. But like, when you get older, you're like, your goals change. I want to look good, but I really want to feel good. I yeah. want to live longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, if you don't mind sharing, um, how much do you make from your online coaching right now? Oh, I don't know if I can um, up and down uh over 100. okay just so we can get a better like a healthier angle on like here yeah there you go because you don't want to have your arm behind us and we kind of have a little hyper extension you also want to have them falling so when it's the bottom there you go we're still we still have some tension All right, that was our workout today. He killed me. Go subscribe to his channel, Johnny Shreve. I hope you guys stay tuned for my prep series coming up. And stay tuned and come to that day two if you want to hear more of those insights about monetizing in the fitness space and making it a career. But I hope you guys all enjoyed. Don't forget to like and comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>